So the S52 is off the stand, the M40 is on the stand. Unbelievably light engine. You could almost manhandle it on there yourself. Uh, Getrag, all sitting right next to the ZF. Should be pretty easy. Right now I'm just trying to find a spot for all the stuff that came out of the M40. And I may hover it in the bay today, but uh, I'm now noticing that I do not have the correct engine mount arms here to actually set this down in the car. So I'm gonna do probably as much as I can. May do like front brakes or something just to kill time since I'm out here, but uh, it won't be bolted in today, unfortunately. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. Four cylinder motor mount, M5 engine mount. Pretty substantial size difference, I'd say. Yeah, so it's not even really sitting close without engine mounts, unfortunately. I really do have to do something about that. Um, another thing I was noticing is this, although it's a 1997 engine, has the 98 style coolant sensor thing. So if I, man, I'm not sure what to do there. This car runs you know, the E30 one wire brown gauge sender. Uh, the ECU sender is compatible, but I'm not really sure how the previous owner did that because this was converted to OBD1. A lot of people will tap this out and put a sensor in there, or they'll drill and tap in there, or they'll get the adapter lead if they're running an E36, but since the E30 is not electrically compatible with that, I'm not sure what the best option is there. So that's something I'm gonna to have to think about. Uh, I do have an S54 oil filter housing for this with the oil cooler provision. Not sure where I put that exactly, but that can be done at pretty much any time afterward, which is nice. I do still have to swap over to the E21 brake booster, which is originally the booster I took out of my M52 powered E30 M3 years and years ago. A little bit less boost than the iX booster but it's also smaller so that should work pretty well considering the weight of this car i'm not really too concerned about it the engine's canted over pretty far to this side i will have to remove this alarm box and then getting the exhaust to run around <laughs> that steering coupler and it might actually run into issues with the flange for the wastegate uh, which i'm not running one of so it's not a big deal but that's gonna be a whole lot of uh, figuring out. So we will see. Well, that went in pretty easily once I got the uh, correct mount arms. So uh, the ratchet strap's kind of holding it because it doesn't have a trans in it, but it's sitting vertically, sorry, horizontally where it's gonna be. The ratchet strap's just there to keep it tilted back so I can go up and down with the car on the lift. Um, obviously there's no flywheel or transmission on it yet. Um, nor any accessories. Just wanted to make sure that it's in and fits well, and both of those things are definitely appearing to be true. So uh, I'm just going to take a few reference photos for Blunt Tech, the person who does this manifold. Uh, to his knowledge, it's never been used on a right hand drive car, so I want to provide a little bit of feedback. So far, it looks like the external wastegate flange is pretty close, so that might be an issue, but with an internally gated turbo, I'm not seeing too much of a problem. Um, however, the exhaust is going to be extremely tight. So here we are underneath. The uh, clearance between the external wastegate flange and the steering shaft is what you would call minimal. I think with an E46 shaft, a pair of them, you could probably squeeze it in there. Uh, all the other clearances look just fine. Uh, it's tight, but it's going to be <laughs> shoving a turbo in a car that never had it. It's all looking pretty good. Um, it's probably as much as I'm going to do for today. I just came out here to get it sitting in the car. I'm actually bringing the charge pipe, the MAF flange, and my intercooler over to a buddy of mine to weld some stuff onto it. So hopefully that goes well, but again, in the meantime, that's, uh, that's a decent amount of progress for a weekend as far as I'm concerned. Thanks for watching.
I guess one final thing before I leave you, if you get screwed by, I guess yourself, and Miller won't send you a new math flange, this is just the standard Hitachi weld-on blade style math uh, bung, I guess, and it fits this Miller math just perfectly. So that's a good solution. It's the perfect contour for a three inch pipe. Make sure it's on 18 inches of pipe on interrupted smooth surface, otherwise you won't <laughs> have a good result. So I'm gonna mark that, cut a little hole in it, and then I'm also going to shorten these tubes here. I'm gonna have those welded onto the end tanks of the intercooler. So just a quick update. I brought the intercooler and the MAF flange over to a buddy of mine, had the charge pipes welded on, I'm going to probably have to change the angle or the setup a little bit, but these at least fit this way now, which is fantastic. Um, it may be mounted here. It may be mounted there. I'm not sure yet. Probably up top. Um, here's the Hitachi math flange. I uh, checked the fit. It does indeed fit with the uh, Miller math. So. As long as the tune still works, this should work perfect. 18 inch piece of pipe. Again, that's the minimum length you need uninterrupted um, to get this to basically <clears throat> work properly and be calibrated for the tune. So yeah, that's all for today. I'm gonna go home and eat now, but uh, figured I'd at least give you a weekend update. I'm gonna be cranking on this still probably evenings this upcoming week as well. So stay tuned certainly, but that's all for uh, this weekend.